Joining us in the studio now is Bruce Phillips of Microsoft. They're the makers of Bookshelf. And next to Bruce is Steve Michael, West Coast editor for the magazine CD-ROM Review. And joining us now for the rest of the show in Gary's place is George Morrow. Steve, CD-ROM Review is about the first publication to address uh, the interaction of PCs and, and uh, the CD-ROMs. How old is it, and who's your fo who do you focus on for the, your readers? The first of the regular issues uh, started coming out last March, and we're bi-monthly. We're going to go monthly early this year. Uh -huh. We're focusing on people that are publishing data on CD-ROM, developing products to use with it. Also, the interested public, too. Not too many end users yet, though. Not yet. Steve, we've heard so much about CD-ROM for a couple of years now, and it seems like a market waiting to happen. Is it about to happen now with things like Bookshelf? Little by little, it's going to happen. We're, we're, we're right on the verge of it happening, I think. What, what's, what, what else does it have to take for it to really happen now? We need a couple more good horizontal products out there, like, like Bookshelf. Like what? What, what, you, what other kinds out. of software products would do it? Uh, some more encyclopedias, maybe a little bit better encyclopedias, some more, some more applications that, that demonstrate the, the interactive capabilities mm -hmm. of the CD-ROM. Maybe a little more? More aggressive think? pricing? A little bit more aggressive pricing <laughs> wouldn't hurt. Okay, Bookshelf is the first really major horizontal application, Bruce. And show us a little bit about uh, what your setup is here and how Bookshelf works. Okay, well, Bookshelf works, works with a CD-ROM drive. Here we have an Amdeck laser drive, mm -hmm. and it works with any IBM type computer, compatible computer. And essentially, it just requires one CD disc. It's just the same as, your audio, as an audio disc and it fits in the player, and the player really is pretty much like an audio player. This one actually will play audio <laughs> disc as well. And the way Bookshelf works is it works with your word processor. It can work in standalone mode too for those people who want to use it for pure research. Uh -huh. And in this particular example, what we have is, is a letter in a word processor. And Bookshelf operates as a memory resident utility that has access to the 10 reference works that are on that disk. The reference works are briefly our thesaurus, a dictionary, spelling checker, a usage alert, the Chicago Manual of Style, Almanac, uh, Bartlett's Quotations, Business Information Sources, U.S. Zip Code Directory, and a package of forms and letters. A good example of how Bookshelf works is in this particular letter, we didn't have a zip code for this particular address. Now, the zip code nor normally comes in a two-volume set, and it's kind of laborious to work through. With, with Bookshelf, you call it up in two keystrokes. Another keystroke or use of the mouse will pull it right, out, right off the letter, so you don't have to type anything in. It takes about three seconds to find the zip code. One more keystroke, mm. it's in your letter, you're out of bookshelf, you're back focused on what you originally want mm -hmm. to do. And that's the key. You don't have to spend a lot of time or wandering around picking up books off your shelf to use bookshelf. It keeps you focused on what was really your mo the most important thing for you to be doing right now, this document. Can you show us another example of a book you might refer to, Bruce? Okay, well, let's use the dictionary. Now, the difference between bookshelf and what you normally can get with some word processors is this is the full text dictionary. This is the American Heritage Dictionary the text that you can buy in a large volume. So it's not just yeah. a spelling checker. That's right. And That's right. You really missed that with a That's right. We didn't abbreviate. There's nothing abbreviated in the, in the definitions. <clears throat> in this particular case, here's a word that I know you both use on the show a lot, occultation. <laughs> uh, I certainly use it all the time. And you might want to check to see if, it's, if you're really using it correctly. You may not even really know what it means. Again, call Bookshelf up very quickly. Call a search. And it takes a few seconds, and it gets us oh, right to the are. full text definition. Mm -hmm. And as pointed out before, the document's your focus. So we haven't lost that. We can go back and forth between it to double mm -hmm. check. I could paste this into your document, and it would reformat it. Uh -huh. Now, the colors here um, are supposed to be something with different kind of print in the dictionary? Right. In the dictionary itself, you'd see italics and boldface mm -hmm. and, and things. And, and the colors here take that place. These colors take that place because Bookshelf is a, a character-based application. It's a good idea. And so it, th we couldn't do italics and boldface on a monochrome system, for instance. If we had based it for this EGA-type system, we could have done that. And you're out of it. And right back in your document. And you're back in your document. It's that simple. Yeah. It's the biggest product Microsoft sh sells in terms of data, 200 megabytes of data, but it's also the lightest. No floppy disk. Yeah. It's just everything is on that one disk that you see here. 